Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Tuesday devotion. On Tuesdays, we go through the morning reading of Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. And today, we're going to be in 1 Chronicles 5.22 as we begin the day with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have given unto us the rain uh, in which we need. You have provided the animals and the plants and the world sustenance, and we give thanks for this. We also pray, dear God, for this day that you've laid before us, that you have established from before the foundation of the world, that we might walk therein. We pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit would lift us up, strengthen us, guide us, and give us peace, and that your wonderful grace would move us in blessing and most of all, to grow in our love for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn to 1 Chronicles 5.22. For many fell because the war was of God. Warrior, as you fight under the banner of the Lord Jesus, observe this verse with holy joy. For as it was in the days of old, so it is now. If the war is of God, the victory is sure. The armies of God could barely muster 45,000 fighting men. And yet, in their war with the enemy, the scriptures tell us they captured 100,000 men. For they cried to God in the battle, and he granted their urgent plea, because they trusted in him. The Lord saves not by many, nor by few. It is ours to go in Jehovah's name, even if we are only a handful of men. For the Lord of hosts is with us as our captain. They did not neglect their weapons, but neither did they place their trust in him, in them. We must use all fitting means, but our confidence must rest in the Lord alone. For he is the sword and the shield of his people. The great reason for their extraordinary success lay in the fact that the war was of God. Beloved, in fighting with sin in us and around us, with error so often coming into our life, with spiritual wickedness, in high places and in low places, with devils and the devil's allies surrounding us from day to day. Remember this. You are waging Jehovah's war. And unless he himself can be defeated, you do not need to fear defeat. Do not tremble before superior numbers. Do not shrink from difficulties or impossibilities. Do not flinch at wounds or death. Strike with the two-edged sword of the Spirit, and the dead shall lie in heaps. The battle is the Lord's, and he will deliver his enemies into our hands. With steadfast foot, strong hand, dauntless heart, and flaming zeal, rush to the conflict and the host of evil will fly like chaff before the gale. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next, the victor's song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the king of glory shall reign eternally. Amen. You know, Spurgeon's words here remind me of a... Uh, famous quote uh, from Matthew Henry's commentaries, where it is said that man and God are a majority. You see, no matter how powerful the weapons of the world may seem, no matter how strong Satan might look, they are, as Spurgeon uh, gives us this picture, chaff in the wind. They are blown away. For they are nothing in comparison to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And one of the things that sometimes we don't take advantage of in the Christian life is the fact 
that we are united to Christ by faith, that the Holy Spirit dwells within us, that we are the temple of the living God. And if this is true, and we know that it is, then why should we fear whatever it is that happens in this world? We are not like the pagans who have to go to the temple of their God. We're not like the pagans who have to offer sacrifices before their God will hear them. For the Christian, the sacrifice has already been made in Jesus Christ. And because of the sacrifice of Christ, we have access to the Father. Anytime we want, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on, we can cry out and the Lord will hear our cries. And we will know that we will be vindicated because vengeance belongs to the Lord. So brothers and sisters, think on this today. Remember that the Lord our God is the one who is sovereign over all things. He is the one who grants us victory because it's his war that we're fighting. And the victory has already been won at the cross and will be consummated when Christ comes again. So let's look forward to that day as we go about our daily life. Never forget that we are in the citadel of the Lord and the gates of hell shall never prevail. Take care, God bless, and have a wonderful day.